the way I describe myself is to, as a community artist. So I like to do work with uh, local people and uh, paint it in the public domain. So everything I do is like outdoors and on walls and get kids and local people to help me do it. Oasis Children's Venture is a kind of is a children's charity and it manages the park that's in front of the mural. They've got a nature garden as well. It's a history of uh, the world's flora and fauna. So it starts off in, you know, primeval times when there was no people, just plants and insects. And it goes through dinosaurs and then prehistoric mammals and then endangered, then English or British wildlife. That leads into South American and African endangered forests. Tapestry of Life was about, you know, just uh, celebrating ecology, really. Christine Thomas and a girl called Jane Ray uh, painted it. Jane has gone to become one of the leading illustrators in the country. Morgan's was painted on the site of the old Morgan Crucible Company works in Battersea, near Battersea Bridge. And this was a company that was founded uh, in the 1840s. Initially it manufactured crucibles, uh, which are made of basically of carbon, and they're like large cooking pots. And that factory um, closed in the early 70s because the company moved out to bigger premises in another part of the country. And there was a lot of... Um, local feeling against this and so the mural was part of a, a protest really um, against this process. It's part of a historical trend in the last few decades for these manufacturing industries to close down in the area and to be replaced by um, in, the, in the workforce by sort of service industries and physically by new flats and luxury housing. It went on for about two years and it was complete I believe by August 78, so it was up almost a year before it was demolished. The number 19 bus was um, probably our most famous bus. Um, it's, if you go back to like punk bands like The Clash, they even sing about sitting on the top of the 19 bus. The characters in it are all people who worked at the garage, so they're portraits of the people at that time. In the top right hand window is one of my neighbours um, from Battersea, um, Mrs Tucky, um, a friend of mine called Steve Tucky, he's a postman now, that's his mother, um, he, she, she remembers having a picture taken and all of that and it was really interesting. Um, they weren't really involved in art but it actually got them in, involved by having their pictures taken and then actually turned into a mural. This was when they were building the Cambala Estate in Battersea, which was uh, a GLC project at the time to build low-rise housing for local people. That brush must have been several feet long, and it was a totally realistic brush um, that was larger than some of the figures there, and it just stood out, and it was just very, very clever. You've seen the good. Now the next section was the bad. So we got the uh, polluting factories, which was Garton's Glucose, his actual factory, and uh, it's, uh, Tate and Lyle's the cube of sugar thing. Then we got, they wanted to build a Disneyland in Battersea Park, so then we've got uh, Trust Houses 40 and uh, Sir Charles 40 coming down the fiery water chute. 
This is the Gang of Four, as we call them. Wandsworth had always been a Labour borough uh, for many years. And um, in 1978, while I was painting the mural, the whole, whole political complexion turned around by, I think, one vote. It's making statements, isn't it, really? I just think it really is very, very clever. And that's why I went um, when they were protesting, because I thought it was such a shame that it had to go, really. I think it was the Derby Day, wasn't it? Because I went to put a bet on a horse, which I like to do. And then I saw this demonstration and I asked what they were doing. And they said, oh, they're pulling this down. The road was actually cordoned off. I believe it was on a day when the Queen was travelling to an important horse racing meeting, Ascot or something like that. Um, yeah, I think Princess Alexandra got through to the races, but uh, they thought it was a bit too hair-raising for the Queen to come by at the same time. They obviously mean a great deal to the people at the time who create them. It's difficult to say if, when, they, when they survive over a long period whether they really retain that meaning for people. I worked with uh, Battersea uh, County School children on the design of it. So that's why it's become Battersea Perspective. Um, we did a questionnaire locally to the council estate and people came up with uh, various elements such as Battersea Park or local history or Battersea Power Station. So it naturally became a kind of local history mural. The characters at the bottom are famous Battersea people and generally they've got somewhere named after them. So like there's uh, John Burns and there's a school called that and there's Burns Road. John Archer and uh, there's, there's an Archer house and there's uh, Charlotte Despot Avenue where, we, you know, where my workshop is at the moment. Certainly the one in Brixton, Nuclear Dawn, is in a parlour state of disrepair. You know, it's really bad, but it's been there since 1981. The seaside picture was local people taken down to the seaside in a coach. I took their photos and then I did a mural about them and I put them on the wall, some were 19 feet high people, and they were ordinary local people. So usually it's kings, queens, dukes and duchesses that get their paintings painted, but this was just, you know, people who lived in the Patmore area getting their picture on the wall. You hardly ever see pictures of ordinary people in the history of art. So, you know, that was, that was a bonus as far as I was concerned. They are a historical thing. If they're set out and they're well done, they record events, they record people's feelings on certain circumstances in, in the area. Some of them do. I think they enhance places, especially when they're done this well.